guys, welcome to All Chat. Today we have a 106 pound Darius Axe, Maxwell the virtuoso musician, and the awesome Johnny Junkers. To start us off, we have a painting of Zyra by Raichio33, who's from Canada. And uh, this is actually a redone picture of Zyra. He did an original one where she's very bloody, and he decided they didn't like it, and so he redid it completely. I love the fact that he also included a speed drawing video with it so that you actually get to watch it take form. Yeah, he actually writes specifically that he rotates the canvas a lot because he prefers to have his strokes in a certain direction for yeah. drawing like, like, yeah. Drawing on pencil and paper, a lot of times, you know, you move the paper so that you can just draw at certain angles. It's just easier to draw certain shapes at certain angles. So it totally makes sense that he would do this digitally as well. Next up, we have a bunch of adorable Poros that were submitted for an EU Poro contest. And what's so cool about this is just the variety. We see so many different Poro skins, for example. We see like a sculpture. I like the deal with the glasses. Oh, yeah, the deal with the glasses, touch. right. Very <laughs> nice touch. And I love that arcade Poro with the feed me a cookie. That is, that is that's <laughs> my, that's so my favorite of the, of the ones that we have. It's like he's been fed quite a bit. He's almost too big for his <laughs> box now. Next up, we have Maxwell, the virtuoso musician, and this is by Art Kirby 14, who's from the US. And there is so much going on with this, but essentially, he has created an entire character, a backstory, a birth date, to age, to personality, to you know who he's involved with. And I wanna just highlight the fact that this character, Maxwell, is not a champion. He's just created just another person in Runeterra who just has their own life in our virtual universe, basically. People are adding to his backstory, suggesting new things, creating works of art that imagine him in this world. <laughs> Am I Soraka yet? <laughs> and next up we have The Struggles of Sunny Soraka by Nevercake. And basically they took gameplay audio from a game they played together and animated it. And it is hilarious. The most fun part for me is to try and reimagine what the game actually looked like. Like, why the hell would you build a Guardian's Angel yeah. on Soraka? <laughs> I need to know. I don't know! How do you build this champion? I think this animation kind of like also gives you kind of like that feeling that you get when you play a champion for the first time, when you're like, oh, this is kind of cool. Oh, wow, my auto attacks look great. Oh, God, what do, what do I build now? Oh, God. you know, like that whole struggle with learning a new champion. What? The fade away banana! Banana auto attack! And finally, we have a Darius axe made by Michael Cthulhu from Massachusetts, and this is a, it's a real axe. <laughs> oh. Like it's 106 pounds Woo! of real axe. Of real axe. <laughs> this thing will murder anybody in its path if you can pick it up. Yeah. But then the other awesome part of this whole thing is the video that they made to go along with it. As you were just saying, like it is hilarious to watch these guys, grown men, try and lift a 106 pound axe, realize they can't, and <laughs> resort to a pulley system wow. just to just to go through the motions uh, that you would with with Darius. It's funny, I imagine them being like, you know what would be cool? Let's make a Darius X. Yeah, they went and made a Darius X and they're like, wait a sec, it's really heavy. Maybe we should go back to the drawing board on this one, guys. Yeah, we're gonna have to think of something else. That's it for Summoner Showcase. Be sure to submit your original fan creations by clicking the link in the description below and share other cool things you find on our Facebook page. Now we're here with the awesome cosplayer, Johnny Junkers. Thanks for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So how, how many League cosplays have you done? I, so I've cosplayed Trindamir, Pool Party Lee Sin, uh, Gladiator Draven, and now a Cinematic Garen. What made you decide on Garen in the first place? I, I started off with Trindamir, and I had a lot of fun. And then I just wanted to do another like really big character with a big sword and stuff. So I saw um, Cinematic Garen, and I'm like, wow, that has a lot of detail. Like, I really want to go after that. So I did that. And it was something that no people really, uh, A, acknowledge exists, mm -hmm. <laughs> or B, you know, have done. So. I went after that. What is it all made out of? I mean, all the material and stuff. I make pretty much all of my uh, armor and props out of uh, PVC foam. Oh, okay. So it's like those PVC pipes, but they blow out a lot of air into it. So it's similar to that. Uh, use a box cutter, cut it, and then heat it with a heat gun and then glue it. Uh, now I want to know how you got started in the first place with, with cosplay and specifically League of Legends cosplay. I actually went to Anime Expo like a long time ago. And I, it, like, in a little section said, like, this is what cosplay is. And I said, <laughs> I could totally do that. And so, you know, you're just some, like, dorky kid, right? Yeah. Like, you know, because we're all, like, pretty dorky. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty dorky. No, we but, are. Yeah. We are, too. Yeah. So, like, you go there, and you make, like, a costume, and then people start, like, 
you know, treating you like freaking Brad Pitt or something. Oh. You know, they, they treat you like you're a million bucks. <laughs> so, I mean, like, it was pretty cool to be like just some gangly junior in high school and like, whoa, people think I'm cool. So, Were you at all shy at first? Because people want to get pictures and stuff like that. So how did that feel? I remember specifically, I showed up and I'm going like, man, I want to like talk to people about my costume, like other people that like this series. Yeah. And then like, can I have your picture? Excuse me? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> want a picture wait, wait of me? A but I don't know you. <laughs> but, and then they, and you're like, wow, like people actually really enjoy what I did. So, you know, seeing people enjoy what you made is like, is just a really big reward, I feel. What about the process of actually getting into character? Like, some characters are more fun than others. Like, Trindamir, it was fun to wear, but it wasn't fun to just, like, try and be Trindamir because it was just like, I'm mad. I'm really, <laughs> I'm, like, really, really mad. <laughs> but whenever I play Garen, like, in my brain, I'm just, like, this big, dumb jock, and I'm just, I'm like, Demacia! It's so <laughs> dumb. It just... It, like, it's so dumb being, being Garen in game and in real life. You're just like, like, Demacia? Demacia! <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for being here with us today. Can you tell us where the people on the internet can find you? Yeah, um, you can find me on Facebook um, under Junkers Cosplay. And then on Instagram and Twitter, you can find me at Johnny Junkers. All right, now it's time for a little BM or GG. And today we're going to talk about Baron, wonderful Baron, who can win you a game, but who can also lose it for you. So when do you go for Baron and when do you not? Short answer, never. I like going for Baron sometimes. I think it's very situational, but... Say, for example, you're so close to like taking out that inhib, you've got some good minion push, and maybe you've taken out one or two of them. Okay, go ahead, get Baron so that we can have those Baron buff minions so that the push will be better. For me, I prefer Baron for the minion buff than I do for even my own buff. I mean, I agree with both of you. To defend Josh's point, as a general rule, if your goal is to win games, you should stay away from Baron. <laughs> it is a ridiculously huge bait for players who don't have the kind of communication that an LCS level team or a ranked fives team has. Exactly. So it's a lot harder to maneuver around that objective and like effectively take it or peel from it if you do need to fight. When you can identify the risk of taking Baron as being really low, then I think 100% you should go for it. In solo queue, I think you have to be 100% sure you can secure that Baron. Like, you can win solo queue without Baron, it's totally okay. It really is uh, important to assess, like, is this worth the risk? And yeah. for me, when I think it's worth the risk is if the enemy team is scaling better than my team is, and I'm like, look, we've got to push it to win it right now because if we don't and if we delay the game, they're just going to steamroll us. Like, it's absolutely insane pushing power, but you have almost as high of a likelihood of giving that Baron to the other team yeah. by attempting it. I would prefer to like bait for Baron than actually start yeah. right, right? <laughs> yeah. like, I don't Baron is an, a Baron really is effective great. tool for baiting. You don't win solo queue by winning the game, you win solo queue by not losing the game. And that's why <laughs> I never go for Baron. Yeah, but at the same time, when you're solo queuing and you don't have that team coordination, the longer you wait, the longer of a chance that you have that your own team is gonna throw. I still think it's extremely situational, but I would go for it a lot more than you guys would. All right, so Mel's more willing to go for Baron and hog all the glory for herself. <laughs> okay. Uh, Josh and I are definitely a hell of a lot more risk averse. Like, I'm going to do everything in my power to stay away from that objective. That's what we think here on All Chat. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. We're excited to hear them. All right, now it's time for Slash R where we're going to respond to some of your comments. But first, we want to thank you for all of your feedback. After all, this is a show for you. So letting us know what you love and don't love is very important and awesome. Our first comment comes from Invader Exif, who says, Great concept, liked a lot of the showcases. However, no YouTuber, streamer, or general video content creator promotion. You're right. The YouTube community is huge, and we didn't showcase enough of it in the first episode, but we hope you enjoyed what we showed today, and we look forward to more of it in the future. Thanks for mentioning that we forgot to credit our awesome Riven Sword, which is made by Zarina Cosplay. Here she is. We've also got two new additions to our weapon wall. We have a Trindomir Blade by Johnny Junkers, our guest today, and a Aatrox Sword made by Kohalu Cosplay. And finally, Michael Caputo asked, why do you guys think Shin would just ultimately destroy Zed? I would love to hear more about this in the next video. Well, you know, just following the lore in general, Shin is angry because Zed killed his father. He's got revenge in mind. I think that's just enough of a drive to make it happen. And then from a more analytical standpoint, if you take the matchup to level 18, Shen versus Zed, Shen's going to have like 4,000 health. 350 armor with a thorn mail, I think at that point it's no contest. Yeah, I mean, I could see it like early on in the game, maybe uh, Zed would beat Shen in like a 1v1 type of thing, but late in the game, no way. Shen's gonna be way too tanky. Well, that's it for our show. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and send us your stuff.
And now it's time for the last law. Oh, 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 oh. Leave it out, Jackie boy! Oh!